Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I have a long overdue review. I am finally going to be testing out the Patrick Ta Major Dimension eyeshadow palette. I have had so many of you request that I review this. So here we are today. If you want to see two looks, I'm going to do one on each eye and my thoughts about this palette, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. As you know, I am coming towards the end of my school year, so things are a little bit crazy. So I got a little bit backed up, but I finally am able to review this. Unfortunately, today it is a first impressions. I mean, I don't know, maybe you prefer first impressions. I normally prefer to test and swatch and get a little bit into the nitty gritty of the palettes before I review them but I'm filming this on Tuesday at 8 30 and this is the time that I got so I'm gonna take advantage of it so let's dive in. Now if you didn't know you probably do at this point but this is Patrick Ta's first eyeshadow palette in his line. As of now his collection is mainly complexion and lips, lots of powder products and cream products for the cheeks, highlights, all about that glow. We have an eyebrow wax and then of course he has a lot of lip products but he has not yet touched the eyes really. So we have have an eyeshadow palette. He also launched an eyeliner formula with this. I did not pick it up because I am swimming in eyeliners. The colors were quite neutral. I'm always intrigued to try an eyeshadow palette that is a first for the brand to really get a feel for their formula, see if there's anything new, unique, and innovative about the formula. So let's take a look at the palette. Well, let me start off by showing you the box. It comes in the typical kind of Patrick Ta packaging that aligns with the other products in the line. On the back, it says that this palette contains luminous creams, iridescent metallics, glistening pearls, and velvet mattes in a single palette. You can wear alone, you can layer, blend, and contour to create a multi-dimensional look that goes from day to night. We have the same packaging as his face products, obviously in an eyeshadow format, and then you open it up and you have the palette. You can see here there are 12 shades in this palette, a variety of different finishes, velvety mattes. What's the most unique about this palette are these two creams right here, which I absolutely love. This comes with a little door so that the powder doesn't get in here. And then there's supposed to be some metallics and pearl toppers in the finishes. Now, as of now that I'm filming this, I haven't even swatched these. Of course, I will be putting swatches right now on the screen for you to see. Let's see the details here. This is made in the USA and it has a 12 month shelf life. Now the big catch with this and this is one of the main reasons besides the fact that I really love the color story was the price. This is $68 and even looking at the other prices of his line, this is expensive. I did not expect this palette to be in the $68 price range. We're bordering luxury pricing here. The rest of the products in his brand don't seem to really align with that price point. So there better be something special about this formula, right? So $68, that is a lot. Now, as you can see, the color story, it is quite basic. Uh, you have some neutral neutrals in here, but I would say for the most part, it leans more warm than it leans more cool. I don't know. I mean, I guess it definitely is a more warm palette, but it has some neutral tones in there. A lot of you guys were unimpressed with this palette. You thought that the color story was boring. And you know what? If any other brand had to come out with this color story, I probably would have agreed with you. But if you at all pay attention to Patrick Ta's artistry and his work, this color story aligns with his whole aesthetic. And being that this is his first eyeshadow palette, I really wouldn't have expected anything else. And because I love his brand, I'm excited about his brand, and I enjoyed the aesthetic of his brand, this is exactly what I would have wanted for him to come out. So is it a boring palette? Yes. But let's be honest here. I mean, I know a lot of you guys do like your color. But if you're at all like me, I like color too. At heart, I'm really so basic and I just wear neutrals all the time. So I'm putting a little bit of tart shaped tape on my eyelids as our base today. I'm also testing out on my face a lot of the Makeup by Mario stuff that just launched. I'm testing some things out to film a review tomorrow. So that is the color products on my face. I'm, I'm looking nice and glowy. All right, you guys, we are going to start off with the most probably intriguing part about this palette. These 
creams, how can we utilize these? So I think on this eye, I'm going to do a brown smoky eye. I am going to take a Tom Ford number 11 brush, take it on, and put it all over my lid as a base. That's blending on quite nice with this brush. Now this is a natural hair brush. It is not synthetic, but it was quite easy to apply. I'm gonna take a clean blending brush, work it out. Now I can't speak for how this cream shadow wears, but that's a pretty nice one and done eyeshadow. That worked out very nicely. So I'm just gonna leave that shade there because I want to start working on top of these. Now, why cream shadows? I like to use cream shadows because the shadows you put on top tend to become more intense and it also really improves longevity. So that is why I would suggest using this cream. We're gonna take this shade right here, gonna be right here in the middle, and I'm going to buff out the edges even more and begin to set the cream to ensure that it is not going to crease because that's not a cute look. And there is a little bit of fallout that's happening, but nothing crazy. You know, it's not a really soft press. It's kind of perfect. That's working out really, really nice, very smooth. Let's deepen that just to really test the capabilities of this palette. I'm gonna take the dark brown on a small brush and let's work her out. Hear me out. This is looking really stunning. And the cream shadow did not disrupt how the powders blend. They are blending beautifully over this cream and you just have a really gorgeous, simple base for an eyeshadow look. I'm gonna go in with the lighter shade of the powder, put it along the lower lash line, and then go in with the darker shade. Really smoke her out. For the eyelid, I need to use this shade. Now this shade isn't super soft, has a little bit of a harder press. I think this is gonna be one of the glitter toppers here. Oh yeah, and this cream base is perfect for this kind of shade because I can feel this lid topper gripping onto the cream shadow. That's going to increase intensity of the shade and reduce fallout. Look at the ugly faces I'm making right now. Wow, oh yes. See, this is the kind Kind of neutral palette that I like because it's neutral, it's boring, but it has these glam shades that really amplify the look. This is the kind of palette that I love for every day. It's stunning. You see that? So just for comparison's sake, what I'm gonna do, this is what that lid topper I just showed you looks like by itself. Still stunning. There's nothing underneath. I'm gonna take that cream base that I just put down and putting it down on my hand. Now we are gonna take that lid topper and put it right over top. I did put two coats, but you can see how that changed the effect completely. So just with this cream base, you kind of have three different shades. You have this light brightening shade, you have a matte brown, and then now you have this shimmery deep brown. So that's kind of what a cream base is going to do. I really love this look. It's very simple, very easy to do, but very glam. I'm gonna take just a little bit of this shade. Where I'm actually gonna mix these two, okay? I'm gonna put this right here just to brighten everything up. I will say there are three of these shimmery kind of shades. I'm not in love with them. They're very beautiful. Well, this one at least is very beautiful on the eyelid, but I don't love the consistency of them. I feel like they might get hard panned. They're very pretty and I like that they're not chunky and flaky and they look beautiful on the eyelid. So I think application wise they're gonna look stunning which is what is most important at the end of the day. Though I do worry how they'll hold up over time and with use. I feel like this is the kind of formula where the oils of your fingers could build up very quickly in the pan and could create a little bit of difficulty as far as it becoming hard band and being able to pick up as much color and pigmentation over time. But that's the kind of thing where only time Time it can really tell. Now there's this really interesting formula in here that I noticed with this shade right here. It seems to be a satin shade with some glitters in there. Almost like, you know, the ColourPop and Tati formula where it's matte with some glitter.
lighter particles. That's kind of what we have going on in here, except the base is more satin than matte, whereas the color pop is more matte. But it's kind of giving me that similar vibe if you're really not into that. There seems to be less glitter in here, less reflex than what would be in the color pop, but that's also the same for this one. It's like a satin shade, but it has some glitters in there. I don't know. I don't know that I'm a big fan of that type of formula. Okay, we are going to move on to the other eye. I think having the creams in here is so fun. I'm a fan. I don't know if they're going to dry out because there really is nothing to seal it. This isn't like, this doesn't like press in. So I feel like this might be something that might end up being a waste if it dries out fast. But again, that's only something that time can tell because at that point, if they dry out, then that's two wasted shades, two wasted wells there. This palette's expensive for that to happen. Gonna have to wear the creams alone one day just to see how they do. But this one is very pretty. It's definitely not as deep as that first cream, but I think it adds a nice kind of paint pot job in that it leaves a nice base, adds some depth in there, and it's gonna add a little bit of stick. I'm not gonna do anything crazy with this look. I'm very curious about this shade. We do get some fallout. It's a bit powdery, but nothing crazy. I would say nothing worth really being bothered about gonna put this shade in the crease and I think putting a shade like this over the cream is a good idea because the cream's gonna hold on to those glitter particles and glitter is a strong word they're more so reflex but that way it will make it less messy that's really pretty and you can see the glitter particles in my crease so I know some of you aren't going to like that so just keep that in mind while I'm at it let me test out the other one this one is a little bit more loosely pressed than the others I'm definitely getting more kickback. Now this is gorgeous as an under eyebrow highlighter. It just adds a very nice shine. I love that right there. That's beautiful. Ooh, I love that. Okay, now we're gonna use this shade right here. I haven't gotten the chance to use this guy yet. And this one's gonna give you a little bit more warmth if you're into more warm looks. This palette doesn't run as warm as it looked in some photos. There were some photos where I saw and I thought, wow, that's like a warm neutral eyeshadow palette. I think it leans more neutral than it does warm, which I prefer. I'm all about that. There's a couple warm shades. That's it. I love how the cream really does not affect how the powders blend over top. And I do want to play with this peach shade right here. Uh, there's a Charlotte Tilbury shade that reminds me a lot of this in her new Instant Look of Love palette. I'm gonna pop this all over the lid. Oh, it's grabbing right onto that cream base, making it one less step for needing glitter glue or a wet brush. This is giving me disco eyes very very pretty and I haven't used this shade yet uh, so this one is more of a metallic rather than that satin shade though this one does have a lot of reflex packed in there as well but it's definitely more of a metallic shade it feels very creamy very smooth I'm gonna take that on my finger and I'm just gonna place that right in kind of the middle of my eyelid and then hazing it out just using my finger your best tool for eyeshadows minus a blending brush that's really Really pretty. I love the quality of that shade. Now I will say these two looks that um, I created today, I'm actually going to turn the light down. You might be able to see the look a little bit better. So you can kind of see the looks a little bit better since I turned the lights down. I'm going to turn them back up. One thing that I will say is the two looks I created, I used completely different shades. There were no repeats, I believe. And the looks look very similar. So on the eyelids, I'm not noticing too big of a difference between the two looks. Now keep in mind, I did two very similar styles of application and they're not looking too different from one another. So something to keep in mind. I mean, that's kind of the case for neutral shades, but I do feel like there are some shades in here that might've been a bit redundant. Like I don't think we needed to have both of these right here. It all definitely stays in the same kind of shade here where there's some differences in depths. But I don't know, like, this is a great color story. I really don't want to knock it at all. I'm fine with it. But if I'm getting really picky, which I can very easily do, I need some more pop shades in here to really make a look super different. But I don't think that was the intention with this palette. So that's why, like, I don't want to knock it. This is like a neutral glam palette, and that does exactly that. But I can see if you're playing a lot in the same depth of the palette, you know, you play a lot over here or you play a lot over here, a lot of the looks may end up looking the same. But if you like these colors, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, let me just kind of place some 
some colors down here on the lower lash line. Nothing crazy with this look. I'm going to put on some liner and lashes and I will be back to kind of give you my final roundup thoughts about this palette. All right, guys, I am back to share with you my final thoughts. I put a little bit of the Fenty eyeliner in the shade Poppy Eyes. It's like a metallic brown, which Patrick Tella does have that color in his eyeliner launch. Uh, so I think this one is quite a close match. So I have that in my waterline. And then I, of course, have mascara, a thin black liner, and then some lashes. Let's talk about my final thoughts on this palette. And I can definitely be a little bit nitpicky for sure. That's why I review and <laughs> I want to point out things that maybe someone might see from both sides. So I do have some worries about the longevity of this palette as far as the creams go, just because I feel like the creams could easily dry out. That's kind of something that I typically experience with products like this. And I also worry about these lip topper shades. I'm not 100% sure. There are some other shades like Charlotte Tilbury where almost, you know, in the first use you get that hard band. That hasn't happened with this, but I feel like there could be potential. But again, that's just something that I won't be able to tell you except with time. But as far as what I use today, everything worked absolutely beautiful. I thought the creams were really stunning. They worked well with powders. They blended out great on their own. The mattes as well blended beautifully. They had the perfect level of pigmentation that still had some playroom to allow you to add more depth and to blend it out with ease. The metallic shade right here felt really smooth and the glitter shades were absolutely beautiful. The only kind of flaw I think in the glitter shades, particularly these two, is they do look quite close to one another. You can see the different colors in the reflex, which I guess is why they're in the palette, but just be aware unless you're taking a look, they're kind of going to look the same. I notice the satin shades with those reflex in there. They are a bit more powdery and more soft press than the actual flat mattes. That's not an issue for me, but just be aware of that if you're not into that type of formula. Everything is, I think, kind of the perfect press though. It's not too messy. So overall, I really do enjoy this palette. I'm very happy with it. This is the kind of palette that I personally feel comfortable grabbing for every single day. So I feel like this is a color story for me. I am so happy with it. So if this is a color story that you've been interested in, you think you'll use it a lot, I think you will be very, very happy with this. And that is all I have for my review. I'm so happy that I finally got it up for you guys. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.